All right, so this is the uh, last video in the series for this unit on coordinate geometry. Uh, what you're looking at is a picture of Main Street USA at Walt Disney World. And I'm using it because it's an excellent example of what's called forced perspective. A couple things you may or may not notice about this or may or may not know about Main Street is, well, for one thing, these are three-story buildings that we're looking at here. All the buildings are three stories. But as you go upward, the buildings actually, the stories become smaller. And so it makes the building seem taller because it's a three-story building, but it's really about two and a half stories tall. That's one piece. Um, the other thing you might notice is as you walk your way, look down Main Street, the castle looks to be pretty darn far away. Okay, it's, It is pretty far away down the street, but what they do to make it seem further so that the place seems bigger is a couple of things. As you walk your way down Main Street, the buildings start to get a little smaller. Okay, they're not quite as tall. See how this, this building's taller? The roof on this one is a little bit smaller, 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 smaller. So you have that feeling that things are getting things are further away. The other thing that happens is the buildings tend to get a little closer to the street. See how much space there is between this awning. As you work your way down the street, there's less street space. The buildings come out a little further into the road. And it forces you to, to think that, that's, uh, that the castle's actually further away. Um, the other piece is as you're leaving at the end of the day, it works in reverse. So when you're uh, walking out of Disney World and you're walking with your kids or whatever and they're really tired, the other end of Main Street looks to be closer than it really is because the street widens up, things get things get taller. So it seems like, you know, when you're tired, when you're tired at the end of the day, it's a less of a walk. When you're getting there, there's the anticipation of getting to the castle and so it seems to be further away. And that's not done by accident. It's done using what's called forced perspective. Uh, if you've taken an art, cor art class, you've seen perspective drawings, okay, where this is one point perspective, where what we have is a vanishing point, and it allows us on a two-dimensional object to draw in three dimensions. So this is just a flat plane, and it's got the vanishing point, and everything's heading towards this vanishing point in the back, and things get progressively smaller. Okay, um, What's that got to do with math? Well... Let's uh, get ourselves another one of these copies. What I can do is if I take this square and I make it a little smaller, okay, like so. I've just made an exact copy of it, and I'll draw in some lines through here. Oops. And if I had this exactly in the center, you'd see that it was there. Then, you know, I can kind of picture this as being looking into a room. I can I get out a pen. I can draw some stuff on the wall, and I'd want to just draw it so that it sort of followed the contours of the wall so that it looked like that window was actually in the room. Okay, follow that one. Follow that way. And it sort of looks like a window. Things down this end would be a little smaller. Picture Charlie and the Chocolate Factory walking into the room where the uh, where the things get smaller at the end. It's forced perspective, but in that case, the room really was getting smaller. So, artwork, Disney World, math, all connected. So, mathematically, what we're going to do is we want to we want to do what's called dilation. Okay, dilation means getting larger. Contraction is the sort of the opposite. It's when something gets smaller. Okay. Uh, Let's pick out some points on this these for this object. This point here. Let's do it in a matrix. It's easier to deal with. This point A is at negative one, comma, negative three. Point B is over here at three, comma, negative three. And then C is at uh, one, comma, two. Okay. There's my matrix. Let me get rid of that crazy little thing there. Okay, What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this, I'm going to double all my coordinates. So basically, remember scalar multiplication? I'm going to multiply that entire matrix by 2, and that's going to give me a matrix at negative 2, negative 6, 6, comma, negative 6, 2, comma, 4. I just did scalar multiplication. So what happens now is I plot this point. Let's do it in red just so we can see the difference. Um, negative 2 comma negative 6 is down here. That's point A primed. Um, 6 comma negative 6, 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6. There's my new B, B primed. 
and finally two comma four two comma four and if I connect those new points oops let me label that one so I don't get confused C primed okay if I connect those points with lines what I should end up with now it's pretty sloppy on that one but I can fix it I guess is a triangle that Wanted. There's a mirror image of that one, larger. Basically what happens is we, we do we call this a dilation relative to the origin. And so relative to the origin, all my points got larger, the piece, the shape itself got bigger, I could see that perspective as we went. Okay? So dilation, we've just made this into a uh, into a larger shape. Okay? So just merely by multiplying by two. All right. So let's uh, let's see. What do we have for points here? Uh, this guy is negative two, four, six, eight, ten, negative ten, comma negative four. I like the red lines, you can tell. Uh, this guy here is at three, comma two, four, six, eight, three, eight. And last but not least, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, comma, 2, 4, 6, 8. So 10, comma, negative 8. Okay, if I cut all these points in half, I end up here at 1.5, comma, 4, 1.5, comma, 4. And here at negative 5, negative 2, negative 2, 4, 5, negative 2. And here at 5 negative 4, so 2, 4, 5, negative 4, okay? Connect those, I'll use the liney thing just to make it look nice, okay? And I get a smaller version of the exact same triangle, okay? I could continue to do that, I could cut, keep cutting these points in half and continue to get smaller and smaller and smaller triangles. Uh, if I hadn't jumped right to the first time doing it by a half, I could have made a triangle that's slightly less, you know, if I just continually multiplied by 0.9, give me 90% of the of the triangle that I had. I'd just get a series of smaller and smaller triangles. If I was able to animate this, I might get a triangle that looks like it's just starting really big and disappearing, okay? And at one point I was going to animate this to make it shrink or grow. I think I still can. Let's see. Got a few seconds to do that. Uh, let's see if this works. Object animation make it shrink and grow. Alright, there you go. So it's going to do that sort of thing. So if I touch the triangle, it shrinks, and then it grows. And so it's just basically the machine is doing that work that we talked about doing, making it larger, making it smaller, but again, just taking the coordinates and making them down a little bit, okay? So this one is a contraction when we're making it smaller, and then it's a dilation when we're making it larger, okay? All right, so rule-wise, uh, if we're using a scale factor D, and sometimes we'll use K, whatever letter it is, uh, we end up with just multiplying each point by that new value, okay? Um, so if, for instance, I was going to use a scale factor of 3, and my original point was 5, 7, so this is my scale factor, I would just multiply everything by that scale factor. So this point would turn into 3 times 5, 15, 3 times 7, 21. Simple enough. So there's my rule for that. And what changes? What stays the same? Okay. So obviously it got bigger. So my lengths changed. Did my coordinates change? Yeah, that's how we made them smaller or larger, right? So my coordinates certainly changed. Um, did the slopes of my lines change? So those are the four things we've been keeping track of. Did the slopes change? The slopes stayed the same. Did the angles change? The angles stayed the same. We're not rotating or doing anything like that. Okay. If back on this one, you know, kind of a cool thing is you can, if you get into computer programming, one of the first things they might have you do is to take a shape and just have it get smaller and at the same time rotate so it just looks like the shape is getting smaller and kind of basically eventually disappearing, not just getting, not just doing that, but it spins at the same time. All right, anyway. So 
the lanes change, the coordinates change, the slopes stay the same, the angles stay the same. So this is the first time our, lane, our lanes have actually uh, changed at all on any of, the, any of the transformations that we've done. Okay, so one last uh, example that I'll leave for you with force perspective, just to get back to the uh, back to it, is this picture that uh, we took just the other day. And uh, that, that's what we call force perspective. Figure out how we did it. It's kind of fun to try to make a picture like that, uh, like that yourself. Okay. So, dilation in a word or two. Not that difficult. The last piece. It's a nice one to show up in your in your project. So, I guess that's all for now. Thanks for watching. See you later. Hope you learned something. That's what I'm supposed to say.